Hey everybody, it's David from Gamer Fraction. I am here at Beamdog and you are? I am Alexi Peppers. Alexi I am Peppers? a game designer and programmer at Beamdog. So what have you worked on at Beamdog? Well, I've been there about a year and a half and I started out by writing the new Beamdog client, which is our own client you can use to download our games and manage all of our great different enhanced edition products. And I am now working as a game designer on an unannounced project at Beamdog, which I sadly cannot talk about. I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> So, with these re-release titles, uh, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale, like I've played those on the original mm -hmm. uh, 10 plus years ago. Yes. Um, what was it like to hear or see those come to life again? Well, Dungeons and Dragons has been such an important popular thing in kind of like nerd culture for such a long time and these games have always been the closest reflection of what it's like to play a tabletop game but in video game form. But people like me who are younger have never really experienced them because of technical limitations and uh, how difficult it was with getting them working on a modern system. So to see such an important part of kind of like our history be presented in a modern format and looking great and exposing that to new people has been really exciting and fulfilling as someone who does love D&D and stuff like that and, and the, the history of RPGs and Bioware and things like that. How do you feel the re re remastered version competes with the mobile versions that are out for these games? Um, what exactly do you mean? Because like our enhanced editions are available on mobile. Oh, are they? Mobile. Oh, yes. okay. Uh, my mistake then. That's all right. Because I, I did know they were released on like Android and iOS yes. and stuff like that. That's also us. That's also you. Wow. iOS, Android, Steam, GOG, Beamdog Client. We have them everywhere. Perfect. To Linux even. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how much time did it take to re-release re these games? Like, did you have to like tear it down right to the bare code and rebuild it, or did you have to were you able to modernize the game quicker with uh, different tool sets and stuff? It's surprisingly difficult, even after. So these games run on something called the Infinity Engine, and so the initial upfront work with the first Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition was kind of from the beginning working with that Infinity Engine and making it work on modern systems and support kind of modern functionality. But having done that, it, it would make it easier to do the other games, but the surprising thing is that, for example, we just did Planescape Enhanced Edition. Planescape was developed on the Infinity Engine, but the team developing it thought, we're just gonna make this, we're never gonna have to work in this code again. It's kind of a one-off and they made a lot of changes to support the weird nature of Planescape. Like the entire spell system was unique one-off code using special stuff that was not part of the original Infinity Engine. So basically every single spell in Planescape had to be gone through one by one and redone by a programmer to support it. So it was a, a time-consuming process because these games are unique and really pushed to limits at the time of, of what this kind of engine could do. Right. How difficult was it to get um, the license to remaster these games? Because obviously they were made by BioWare many years ago. Were they open to the fact of this? Did you guys have to negotiate some sort of right. deal with them? Or I'm not 100% sure since I am at the programmer <laughs> the program designer said, level. Right, right. Um, it is the fact that our CEO, Trent Oster, was from BioWare, and, and we have multiple people like that who worked on the original game. I think meant, you know, Trent knows the people, and he worked on this originally, and there's still some pretty close ties between Beamdog and BioWare. I do know we have certain problems, like we were looking for the source code for Icewind Dale 2, which is one of the few games like this that we have not enhanced, and the reason is we can't find the source code. No one has it. We've looked everywhere. We put out an open call online. Hey, if you know anyone who has this source code, get in touch with Trent, and no one has it. I guess you couldn't just decompile the original one of the copies yet to get source code. Not to make the kind of deep changes that we do. What's the time frame to, to make a remastered version of like one of these games? Does it take months, a year, multiple years? Definitely months at the least. Um, a year is also a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> Something around that, like I said, it's kind of, it depends a bit because when we had to do it for the first time, that, that's obviously the biggest one, and then Baldur's Gate 2 is a bit more similar, but then Planescape had all of these unique things, so um, it's hard. 
hard to say, but... When you guys were going through the codes on the game, did you find bugs that they had not fixed and you're like, oh, well, we need to fix this? Or do you just leave everything the same and just convert it to the new engine? You know, that was a difficult problem because there are some bugs that fans know about and love. Like, um, there was a typo in Planescape where there is a kind of intellectual brothel <laughs> and it's called, I think, the brothel of slating intellectual lusts. And it meant slaking, but it was misspelled as slating, which made no sense, but everyone kind of loved this little typo. And so when we were working on it, we are like, do we fix it? Like, it was wrong, but people, like, it's become a joke. Right. So it was actually more difficult than you'd think, because there are some bugs that they've existed for long enough, people kind of hold them dear and then don't want you to fix them. So there were some kind of bugs and improvements, stuff like there were AI issues in the original Planescape that we were able to look into enhancing. But a lot of the time, even when we do something, we leave an option to turn it off because people get really passionate about experiencing the game as close as possible to how they remember playing. Right, right. So did you fix it? Was it slating or slaking? We kept it how it was. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Nice to talk to you.